Hi, my name's Eric. I'm a forward deployed engineer at North Slope Technologies. Today, I'll be talking you through how to integrate large language models into your Foundry applications. So let's walk through an operator's workflow in Foundry. So today we're working with a chain of laundromats called Spin and Sparkle. And the goal of this tool you're looking at here is to help the technicians at the laundromats more effectively troubleshoot any issues they might have with their machines, uh, being able to reference back to the source material from the manufacturer to ensure they're taking the proper steps in the most efficient way. So I'm gonna walk you through a bit of the workflow here, and then we can talk about how we built this using Foundry and some of the cool applications they have inside. So let's say I'm a technician. I found out that the hose on the back of one of my machines is currently leaking. Um, we do have that suggestion here, but you can imagine you'd be able to type in any type of query you'd be curious about with regards to maintaining your machine. I can submit that in a similar chat interface that I'm sure a lot of you are used to by now. So what we've done here is gone and queried all of the documents, and we can talk about how we've set up that query in the back end to be able to understand what parts of the process and each document this could be referring to, returning that context and packaging it back in human readable text. So for example, I can read through this and I say, hmm, I haven't maintained that valve in quite a while. Let me go and see what this looks like. Once this view is loaded, it'll take you right to the page where uh, this information was found. So you can come in here and see the steps for checking the valve. Uh, you can understand what parts need to be attached. Um, if you keep going, you can see information about the drain hose. Now, this is neat, but technical documents can be kind of terse and uh, not exactly the clearest language. So we're trying to have some additional toggles in here for a user to come and uh, investigate this manual. So for example, regarding these drain pipe movements, what I'd be able to do is highlight text here and that opens up a second page where we're able to integrate with a different language model to help us understand the text here on the page itself. So for example, I want to take this drain pipe example and then understand what materials would I need to actually go and uh, fix this. So I need a drain pipe of this size, a hose, a drain hose, and of course a wall security, securing that to, to the structure. Transitioning to the technical aspect of how this was set up in Foundry. So, at the very source, we have a set of technical manuals regarding all of the machines we've uh, we bought and are currently in operation at our centers. We have a tool in Foundry called Pipeline Builder that will trivially let you convert those PDFs to text, generate embeddings through whatever the state-of-the-art OpenAI models are, and then push that to your ontology. So, to walk you through some of those steps here, there's a bunch of other bookkeeping going on here, but that's not the real meat of this. You can very trivially extract PDF to text, so you could do OCR where you actually operate on the image or just copy paste the text out of the file into a column. Uh, the next good bit is we can do some auto chunking where we decide what size we want to chunk, how much of an overlap to be, and any separators that might be contained therein. So at this stage we've extracted the text and we've chunked it and then exploded that uh, those chunks so they're each their own row. From there we have a very very simple way to generate the embeddings. It's literally a board in Pipeline Builder called Text to Embeddings. You select the chunk you'd like, or excuse me, you select the column you'd want to operate on as your chunk. You can pick whichever model you'd like to use. Why not just use Ada 2? Uh, and then there's also a fun little toggle for those who are compute conscious to make sure you don't recompute rows. So if you have a set of text uh, and you've already embedded that, you don't want to rerun it every time you might get new manuals coming in. So you can set it to say, if I've already computed this row, just skip it. From there, we actually have our objects of embeddings. So now that we have our embeddings, the next step is to go and build this actual chatbot interface. This is a tool called AIP Agent Studio inside of Foundry. This will give you some really, really interesting toggles to not only provide an interactive chatbot to your users, but have it be ontologically aware. So in this example, I have the object I just created that is the Spin and Sparkle embeddings. So each page and each chunk has been embedded into its vector, and now I want the, uh, the chatbot to be able to query those embeddings to figure out what's most valuable when a user query comes in. So all you need to do is just hook up that I'd like to query these, ob these objects uh, and just let the AIP Agent Studio know that this contains all the vector embeddings of all the technical manuals. From there, um, you can choose what 
type of model you'd like to run. You can give it a brief system prompt, just informing the model of how to respond to questions, and then even set up some uh, pre-prompted things to give a user an inclination of how should I be interacting with this. From there, going back into the workshop, the embeddings will automatically be linked. The chat mart is smart enough to know if I query an embedding to answer this question, I can automatically put it in the reference to uh, whichever text was returned. And then the last step being the highlight the text, use an LLM to give me some explainability to answer a particular question, is through another app called AIP Logic. Now transitioning to AIP Logic. So what I do here is set up some inputs. I say I want a embedding. This is effectively a page with its vector embedding. I want the type of analysis I'd like to do. In this example, it's either explain this text or give me the bill of materials. And then of course the highlighted portion in the PDF to go and explain. So what we do here is we just have a couple booleans that we compute to figure out what type of analysis do we want to do. Empty string just to return a default case. And then we have a conditional that basically says when the prompt is of type explain this text, I want to run this LLM board that will basically say you're a helper to help users understand this text. Here's the entire page giving it the proper context. Here's the individual text to explain back. Uh, and then we can return that. If it's bill of materials, we have another LLM to uh, query that and return that result as well from the chunk page as well as the text to explain. So in terms of how we set that up in workshop, now going to workshop in edit mode, I can come in here. Uh, this is very easy. All you need to do is add a new AIP interactive widget and then choose the AIP agent studio you've previously published. Uh, you can also pass in the embeddings object. So looking at our Spin and Sparkle embedding page in an object view, uh, the way we set that up is there are, using the PDF viewer interface, it, you can automatically select this toggle such that if I highlight a piece of text, it will automatically put that into the string variable. I just have a simple string selector to say what type of analysis is this. From here, the way it works is I have a function. So when I publish the AIP logic, it automatically publishes a function to your ontology that you can configure the inputs. So I pass in the currently displayed spin and sparkle embedding. I pass in the text that I'd like to explain and the type of analysis, and that will automatically return the string I'm looking for. So to show you one last time, I can highlight this whole section of security risks. Um, I can say, give me an explanation that calls right out to the AIP logic, and we have our response here. Thanks for tuning in to this Foundry field guide regarding integrating large language models into your Foundry workflows. We look forward to seeing you in the next field guide.